Crashing is one of the harder topics in general maths that can make you crash out. It's actually one of the worst topics that are taught by schools majority wise. So here are two methods that I'm going to be teaching you on how to focus and solve crashing in a very systematic manner. No trial and error needed at all. So let's turn these curveball questions that only 5% of the state get into very simple textbook questions that everyone can understand. Let's have a look at this exam question from 2023 about crashing. So there are 12 activities in this network and the manager of this project can reduce the time of six of these activities and the maximum they can decrease a certain activity is two days. So these are all the activities and they have different costs as you can see and they have a maximum budget of $15,000 to reduce the time for several activities and they want to have the maximum reduction in the project's overall completion time for that $15,000 budget. Let's go ahead and do method one. So the first step we're going to be doing is finding the critical path. So we're going to quickly do this. Um, so this should be something kind of second nature for you guys on how to do this. So 19 plus 4, 23, 24, 4, 9, 14, this is 16, 22, 12, Okay, so the critical path looks to go like this here and then using the dummy activity going this way here, down here, here. So currently the overall completion time is 24 and we want to try to reduce this as much as possible with these things. So let's have a look at the um, six activities, A, B, F, H, I, K. So we're gonna just quickly highlight these activities. So what we wanna do is in this method, we're gonna first try and reduce only the necessary options and the cheapest options that are on the critical path. So obviously we're not gonna do anything with H and B because no matter how much we reduce that, the overall completion time of 24 still stands. So we're currently on the critical path is I, K and A and the cheapest options out of I, A and K Another thing we're going to do is add a bit of an asterisk to show you what is on the critical path right now. I, A, K. Cheapest options are I and A. For this specific question, it doesn't matter which one we crash first. So let's go with I. So if we crash this one time, it becomes 5. And now instead of 19, it's going to be 18, which means that this is now 22. And now the overall completion time is 23. So we're going to put a bit of a tally mark on I. Now the next thing is we have to notice, has anything changed in our diagram? So right now this is 5. So this is still not part of a critical network. Um, now, thing is, this is 22. And we notice that coming up here, it's also 22. So that actually introduces a new critical path. So going down to B, then up here, then down here, and so let me add this up, 9 plus 7, 16, going this way. So as you can see, this is 22, it says it's 22 days long, and the other path is also 22 days long at this vertex. So that means there's now two critical paths. So what this essentially means is that we can't crash one thing at a time. We have to crash two things. So we have to crash one thing on this pathway at the top and then one thing on this down pathway, bottom pathway as well. So we're going to choose the cheapest combination of those two. So bottom we have B and H, um, cheapest option is H, again we're just going to mark what's on the critical path. So H is the cheapest option and then for the top pathway uh, we're just going to roll with I again. Um, so we're going to say H and I. So I'll put in my tally marks H and I. So let's reduce these things by one item. Uh, one day six, and this one becomes four. So how does this affect the overall completion time? So this goes from four, nine, nine plus six, 15. So I'm just gonna put a 15 here. 15 plus six, 21. And then at the top, 13 plus four is now 17. Um, I just dropped this out just to make it clearer. 17. What we also notice is that there's a 17 at the top here, which means that this path is now introduced as a critical path. So 17, 17, 
um, that means that this is also 21 and now the overall completion time is 22. Now the thing is we still have more money in our budget, we have $15,000 um, so we can still do more crashing. Now here's the problem, I has been reduced two times which means we can no longer crash I anymore. So, and we also introduced F to the critical path. Now let's have a look and see what is the cheapest way we can reduce the overall completion time. So I is no longer enabled, but the thing is, it doesn't matter. Even if we reduce I, we would have to reduce F and combining those two things, that's going to be pretty expensive. That's going to be 2,500 plus a 1,500. So honestly, we can reduce A, which is 1.5. Um, so we're going to reduce that once. And then we can reduce H again, so which is 1,000. So we're going to reduce A and H. A and H. So H now becomes 5. So as you see, 5 plus 5 is 10. This is also 10, which means that E is also on the critical path. And also we did max out H, so I'm going to remove it. And now let's recalculate the critical pathways. So if this is 5, that means that this is now 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. And then 12 plus these 4s are 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. That means the overall completion time is 21. But we'll double check with the bottom pathway as well. So 5 plus 5 is 10. So this is 14. And then going up here is 20. Okay, 20 plus 1 is 21. So again, 21 is our final path. So we start at 24, and we've already reduced the overall completion time by three things. Um, let's have a quick check of a of our budget. See if we're going over the budget. So this is 1,500, and H is 2,000 because we have two of them, and I is 3,000. So that is clearly under the budget. So we're going to do some more reductions. So again, we can't use H. So what is the cheapest way we can reduce the overall completion time? Um, so A can be reduced again one more time. And since H cannot be reduced, the only th other thing on that pathway is B. So we're going to reduce A and B. So this becomes a 3 and this one becomes a 4. So let's quickly write this on the tally. So A and B. Um, so A is fully consumed and B is there once. So let's recalculate the critical pathways. So 4 is here plus 7 is now 11. That means this is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. So top pathway is 20. Um, okay, 3 plus 5. Okay, this is now an 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And that makes sense. 3 plus 10 is 13 as well. 13 plus 6 is 19. 19 plus 1 is 20. So yeah, right now our completion time is 20. Now let's double check one more time if we're over budget. So currently we have $5,000 left because we've already spent 10000 So we'll have a check of what else we can do with that money. So A is fully maxed out. Uh, we're left with B, F, and K. Now, K was something I was avoiding a lot because it costs the most. But the thing is, if we combine K and B, that will be $5,000. Um, and F, the problem about F is that even if we reduce F to 3 or even to 2, it's not going to make an effect to the critical path. The critical path is still going to be 20 because of this bottom path down here. So honestly, I want to cross out F and say this is useless to um, crash out of the waste of money. So we're going to do the B and the K, which would reduce um, this pathway and this. So this now becomes a 2 and this now becomes a 3. So that means that this 15 becomes an 18, then this 18 becomes a 19. So the overall completion time looks to be 19, but we'll double check with this. 2 plus 5 is now 7, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 2 plus 10 is also 12, and 12 plus 6 is 18, 18 plus 1 is 19. Okay, K is that, P is that. 
So, and we're going to say f is 0, a is 2, b is 2, f is 0, h is 2, i is 2, and k is 1. And that all adds up to $15,000 in our budget being used. Um, and that is your final answer as well. So if they had another mark saying, how much would you reduce it by? Well, we went from 24 to 19, which is an overall reduction of five days. Now we're going to be moving on to method two. So method two has the same principles as method one, but we're going to be doing it in the opposite order. So the way we're going to apply it is we're going to crash absolutely everything, no matter what, as much as possible. So we know that every activity can be decreased by a total of two days. So A, B, F, H, I, K can all be reduced by two days. So A is now four, B is now two, H is now five, K is now two, F is now two, I is now four. So now that we've crashed everything, we're gonna check the critical path now. So the critical path is, we're gonna do some forward scanning, four, 11, this is 13, but here is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17, 18, then the bottom is 2, 7, 10, uh, okay, that's smaller, 7 plus 5 is 12, 2 plus 10 is also 12, 12 plus 6 is 18, L1, 19. So as you can see, the critical path changed here, so it's actually going to go down here, then up here, then here, and we also have the bottom because this is five and five, that's also 10. And then it goes through here like that. So we're gonna be doing the opposite. So instead of crashing items on the critical path, because we know that everything on the critical path has been crashed, we're gonna be uncrashing things. So it's like the opposite. So as you can see, F has been crashed, I has been crashed, K and A, but some of these crashes are completely unnecessary. So what we do is we un we look at activities on the critical path first of all and see okay were these crashes necessary so you can see this was definitely necessary this was necessary because otherwise it would increase the overall completion time from 19 to something higher so let's go and check what is the most expensive item that we can uncrash so in terms of the items that are not on the critical path which is a f and i and k the most expensive item to uncrash is K. So we're gonna uncrash K once. So now from negative two, so K is no longer two, K is now three. And we're gonna see how that affects everything. So as you can see, 15 plus three is indeed 18. And as you can see, we have 18 up here and 18 on the bottom, which means that there's gonna be some critical parts introduced here. So we're gonna go backwards like this and then we know that it has to go from 15, take away 4. We know this dummy transfers the 11 here, so I'll just write that 11. So 15 minus 4 is indeed 11, which is carried from here, here, and here. Now, 15 minus 2 is not 11. That means that F can actually float for a bit, which means that F was pretty useless to crash in the first place. Why would we crash that? It's not on any critical path. So... As we see, A was necessary to crash because it's created this critical path, and K was also necessary to crash. So, that means we're gonna uncrash F. So let's first uncrash F once to see what happens. So instead of F taking away two becoming two, I'm gonna take away one, so four minus one is three. So F is now three. As you can see, no new critical path is introduced because the bottom is worth four days and the top is three days. So this still has a float time of one. So we're gonna uncrash it again. So now a critical path is introduced. And as we can see, the final completion time is still 19. Um, and now all we have to do is just double check, have we gone over budget with the current crashes we have? So currently we have two A crashes. So I'm just gonna say times this by two. Um, we have two B crashes, we have zero F crashes, we have two H crashes, 
and we have two I crashes and we have one K crash one K crash so let's all let's add this all up okay surprisingly that equals 15,000 and that means we are still in the budget and that also means we have reached that 19 goal a lot faster so as you can see method 2 was so much faster so we can straight away write in our answers 2 2 uh, 0 2 2 1 2 2 1 now this method and the other method as well they're both useful in their own respective ways um, but as you can see in this thing we're going backwards so as you see this one was a lot of lot more working out we went forwards we went okay let's go 24 then 22 21 20 19 but here we went straight to the end goal we went to 19 by crashing everything and then we just removed all the unnecessary crashes so let me summarize both methods and you can see it side by side and see how these two methods are related to each other so this is the first method so what we did initially was we saw the critical path without doing anything without doing any reductions then we crashed the cheapest activity on the critical path because we want to minimize the amount we're spending then we saw if new critical paths are being introduced then we crashed the next cheapest activity that was on the critical path and then we saw if new critical paths introduced and we kind of repeated this cycle so i might write a note saying repeat this cycle until the budget has been maxed out now in the second method we did the opposite here we crashed everything the most you could and then we identified the critical path so as you saw we first got rid of everything like we first crashed everything twice and then we saw the critical path then instead of crashing things uh, we uncrashed unnecessary activities that are not on the critical path and then we saw if new critical paths are introduced so as you saw unnecessary activities was f so we removed that and then we saw if any new critical paths were introduced so as you can see new critical paths were introduced then we also uncrashed the most expensive activity so k was the most expensive activity and also wasn't on the critical path which meant that we were able to see it then we saw if new critical paths are introduced and then you kind of repeat this cycle until you fit inside the budget whereas as you saw this one we were getting higher and higher um, to 15,000 whereas here we were going lower and lower until we reached 15,000 now for this question they've designed it very nicely so that coincidentally um, the minimum time that is possible is 19 can also be reached with the $15,000 if there was a lower budget like $14,000 then we wouldn't be able to reach that 19 goal yeah I hope you understand these two methods both very interesting and definitely another tool to add to your crashing toolbox